morning students already we know we have finished the alvanic and faradic current today we are going to talk about low frequency current the faradic current which can be used for in a specialized form we know group stimulation and individual muscle stimulation can be done with faradic and galvanic current we have already gone through how is the current produced then production then physiological effect therapeutic effect and indication of contraindications of paradic and galvanic current individually now we are going to start with the specialized technique first technique we will start with is paradic foot bath paradic foot bath generally refers to using a paradic current for stimulation of the internal uh, intrinsic foot muscles with the help of a bath that is the water tubs so basically we are why we are using like why do we actually use bath what is its basic nature why we are using it so depending upon that see why because water has the conducting property we know that for conduct current to be uh, introduced into the body requires a conducting medium generally when we are using it to stimulate the individual motor points or the uh, group muscle stimulation we require the conducting gel either the conducting gel or the lip mat which is dipped in water now for the lower limb particularly the intrinsic muscles when we are not able to concentrate pin point the internal muscles intrinsic completely deep muscles we are using the paradic foot bath so basically foot bath is application of paradic current to body parts in the tub or tray or tank tank containing water is termed as bath method of application it can be given in two form unipolar or bipolar where unipolar refers to one can be in the bath tank tank or water immersed in water and other can be in the it can be connected anywhere using a just to complete the circuit or it will be while while we will be getting the water while the other will be at a convenient part where it has to be fixed then unipolar bipolar refers to both the electrodes will be immersed in water both will be in kept in the water and the muscles are stimulated what are the muscles that are generally stimulated with this are intraosseous lumbricus and abductor pollicis so basically advantages of this technique is the skin resistance skin impedance remember skin impedance refers to the resistance offered by the skin to the flow of current into the body so that is they reduced by the water because the water which we use is generally warm water or the normal temperature as the water temperature rises the resistance will be reduced so we use the resistance is lowered by soaking the part in the water continuously then second advantage is water makes a perfect contact with the tissue where you don't have the in uneven surfaces where you can't locate the pin point motor point we are talking about the intrinsic muscle the sole of the foot is already thick and the muscles which we are talking are inside that and between the bones so if we use this water water is used and then the parts is conveniently soaked inside then the stimulation the current passage will be more easier in that area then wash of electrolytes formed under the electrode so there won't be any chance of electrical burn <coughs> when what is because the water is continuously moving or the, it is easily washed off all the chemical deposition that is occurring because of the current current passage is being washed off okay disadvantage current cannot be localized like how we use the particular uh, pen electrode or the electrode to stimulate one particular region here all the muscles involved or particularly will be we cannot pinpoint the location so current cannot be localized superficial muscles contract more than the deeper muscles hmm? due to the presence of water and chances of electric shock if there is some loose connection it does not mean chances of loose electric shock does not mean if it is properly insulated you will not get the shock it is if there is a loose connection the uh, connector is come out the lead is come out from the electrode then it will be open current then it can cause shock or something if it is not properly uh, insulated or placed so which are the 
goods, highly current may be applied in bath for lumbricals, introsion, and abductor halosis. For each of this, the position of the electrode placement is different. Generally, how what is the position of the patient? The patient should always sit in a high sitting stool. Then there should be a low stool that has to be kept. In that, we have to keep the water bath. Then in that, we have to place the electrodes, depending upon which muscles you want to uh, stimulate. So what is the reason which muscles and the placement of electrodes will completely depend upon that. So highly foot path position, position the patient in high sitting with back well supported because he has to sit for more than 15 minutes and the patient should be comfortable. So that is the basic reason why to see well and feet on a stool covered with a plastic sheet. Why? So that the water is not spilled here and there for the cleaning. Place the foot in a bath containing enough warm water to cover the toes. Up to how much? It should not be covered up to your lantern. Only till the toes. toes are covered because we are talking only about the intrinsic muscles. So then we have how to stimulate. To stimulate the lum lumbricals, generally we place two electrodes transversely. One over the metatarsal head and one over the heel. They are placed two. And generally the, uh, what is that your, uh, electrodes should be 3 into 7 centimeter diameter. If they are generally long electrodes. They can be either metal electrodes or it can be your carbon electrodes. So remember when you are using the bath method, you don't require lip floor. You don't require the conducting gel. So directly the leg can be placed over that electrodes. Because water is acting like the conducting gel or conducting gel. So one under the head and the another one under the metatarsal head. So let's see. Look at the size of the electrodes. So that's the window, graphical difference of picture. See, these are long. Mm -hmm. So there it will be 7 centimeters length and 3 centimeters is the electrodes generally which are used for the paradigm foot bath. The placement for plantar introsion will completely change. They are kept under the metatarsal head only on the either side to the side of the leg. On the right or left, this side. So you can have it. If you that one elbow is placed on each side of the foot at the level of metatarsal shafts. Right? For this, you have to remember the anatomy. With where is the origin and where is the insertion of the lumbricals? Where is introshay? Introshay generally refers to between, inter, between each shaft of the metatarsals, they are attached transversely. Lumbricals originate from the where? Anatomy. Yes. Come on, look at the and inserted into the almost a heads of the metatarsal. So your anatomy is very essential for uh, simulating muscles. If you don't know where muscles are, then how are you going to be? That is the reason why electrodes were kept. One was kept at the heel and one was kept at the metatarsal. So they extend from the heel area and up to the metatarsal. When we are talking about introshaft, they are between the shaft. That's why we are keeping one over here and one over here so that the current can pass consequently into the all the muscles. So, yes, then when we are talking about abductor halosis, it is basically you have to keep one electrode for the, under the heel mm -hmm. to complete the system. The active electrode, we are using a pen electrode and we stimulate the motor point of the abductor halosis. That will come around somewhere in this way. So, you have to know the anatomy. So before going into the practicals and you have to know the anatomy. Last class we discussed about the motor points of face. So similar thing you have to know the motor points of individual muscles, particularly the superficial muscles. Now what are the parameters with which we generally stimulate the foot? Generally it is given surge paradigm current where the surging is done for Surge duration is 1 second and the surge interval is 3 second. That is 1 second contraction 
and then followed by 3 seconds of rest and then again and the intensity is which is enough to see the visible contraction intensity according to how much the patient is able to tolerate and how much the or the patient is you are able to visible see the contraction and the treatment time generally is given 15 to 30 minutes what are the common cases where we give paradigm footwear generally the flat foot or weakness of the muscles lower limb muscles the arch loss of the arches of the foot and weakness of the abductor pollicis can be anything it can be because of the pectoral nerve injury So that is it about the paradigm footpath. Is it clear? Yes, it's not very difficult. If you have understood the basic physiolo physiological effect and everything from the paradigm current, it is easy. It's just we are changing the pattern of give how we are giving the current. There we always have to follow the either the motor point, uh, individual motor point using the pen electrode or we used to use the electrodes, fixed electrodes, carbon electrodes or the metal electrodes to stimulate the muscles. This is the first technique. Then second technique we are this this already told you but important thing is rectangular. So it is the size of the electrodes that you have to use for this. And most important thing is always remember you have to encourage a patient to do voluntary contraction whenever the person is you are giving a panic. Remember, paradigm current is given only for the innervated muscles. So obviously, the person is able to do the contraction only the probably the strength is not enough to do the complete contraction. So same way, we have to always encourage the patient to contract the muscle voluntarily during the current muscle. When the muscle current is coming, the muscle is contracting, the patient also has to do it voluntarily. Whether it is happening or not, it depends upon the strength power of that particular muscle. Okay? We have to tell him slowly, then we reduce the current. When the person is able to do more forcefully, then we reduce the current. So, that is the paradigm footpath. Then, another one technique is called as paradigm under pressure. Paradigm under pressure generally is given for reducing the edema. Remember the physiological effects in which we have said one of the important physiological or therapeutic effect is reduction of the edema, increasing the venous blood flow and lymphatic drainage. So now we are trying to get that, achieve that with a different specialized technique. What we are going to do is we are going to, are going to give paradigm stimulation with along with compression and elevation. So basically when we are talking paradigm, it is the electrical stimulation of muscle combined with compression and elevation which is used to increase the venous and lymphatic drainage as well as to relieve the edema. Ideally when they ask you this question you have to say that paradigm under uh, pressure follows the principle, three principles. Elevation, compression and stimulation. Always keep that in mind. It follows the three principles meaning elevation, compression and stimulation. Elevation, how elevation is done? General elevation is done by placing the limb, which your upper limb or lower limb, in such a way that it is above the heart level, so that it aids in draining of the fluid or return of the uh, blood supply, increase the blood supply, venous return. So compression, compression is provided by the elastoprene bandage. We are giving a external compression to aid or help in venous return. How? by applying the crepe bandage. Then stimulation. Stimulation, we give paradigm type of stimulation. Stimulation, paradigm type of stimulation is used to produce a near normal like tetanic type of contraction, which is normal, uh, normal contraction type. So when they are doing that normal contraction of group muscles, what happens? There is movement occurring. When there is movement occurring, the blood supply increases. So it acts as a pumping mechanism. Muscle contracts relax, muscle contract relax, it has causes increase in the venous It increases the blood supply and thereby increasing the venous So we are using three, three principles, applying it together to achieve our goal. 
there can be edema, generalized edema in the lower limb or upper limb. It can be because of various reasons. See, there will be a mastectomy done. Indications, most common indication, mastectomy is removal of the breast. That is done after that they remove the lymph axillary lymph nodes also. So that person is more prone to get a lymphedema of the upper limb on the removal, removed side. So it is pretty common. So those people will get getting repeated edemas. To reduce that, that is a generalized edema. Why it is not becoming, it is becoming swollen because the blood is not flowing properly and since the axillary lymph nodes are removed, then there is a problem. Stasis, venous stasis occurs. So we give for upper limb. Lower limb there can be lymphatic problems or it can be just any other problem. So we do. How we do? Most importantly, we take the electrodes. We generally use the square or rectangular electrodes hmm? to stimulate. Where do we stimulate? Where we can get the pumping movement. This movement. See, in the upper limb, this movement is more important. Right? When this movement is occurring distal to proximal, the blood will flow. In the lower limb, your calf muscle. Calf muscle is called as the second heart, right? Because it helps in pumping the blood back. So we have to get that movement. How we you get for upper limb? Again, see. Generally, the patient is in supine position. Patient's position is supine position. Sometimes for upper limb, we can just give it in sitting position with proper hand support. The limb is elevated above the heart level using pillows. If it is lower limb, you use it, keep it in the span way and it is elevated. Then for upper limb, again you can keep it this way. Or if the person is not comfortable lying down, even in sitting for upper limb, we can do it, not for lower limb. Upper limb, we can do it in sitting position with proper back support and keeping the arm elevated. If patient is not, is comfortable in spine position, then keep it in spine position. So the pressure bandage is applied over the extremity. This you have learnt in nursing, how to apply a crepe bandage. Most important principle behind applying your crepe bandage is the pressure difference. You have to give more pressure at the distal and as you rotate it or uh, yes, um, rotate it on the lower limb, the pressure has to slowly reduce from distal to proximal. That is like you are squeezing. So more pressure is given in the distal aspect and slowly the pressure while rotating we have to adjust such that the pressure is slowly reducing as you are going proximal. Along with that you place the electrodes. Where do you go in the electrode? Yes, while rotating you have to in place between. it. Yes. It's better, one of the best way is take the electrodes, place it, one over the yeah, forearm aspect. Ola respiratory, forearm, palmar side, you can place one, that is the active electrode. Your inactive electrode you can keep either at the cubic mucosa or you can keep here, somewhere to complete the circuit. Okay. You can keep it here, put the with the micro vortex, you can stick it. Then tie the elastic grip bandage continuously. Yes, it's easier that way. And wherever that opening for the lead insertion is coming, you have to see to that you have arranged in such a way that it is open. Stick, rotate, and keep it open. Then once that is done, you connect the leads to it. Then the pressure, the skin must be clean before the treatment. That is the general protocol for you. You have to follow all the seven, nine steps of all the principles of application. Starting with introduction, explanation, then testing of the machine, the cleaning of the area, checking for the area for the contraindications. Then next, checking of the temperature, contraindications, skin sensation, then checking of the machine, then See whether the machine is also zero and everything, then connecting. Now comes the procedure. Anything you have to follow those steps continuously. Then you have to include the treatment. Now give the treatment for the desired. Generally, this treatment is also given 15 to 30 minutes. The skin must be clean, everything that is to lower the resistance. Placement of electrode. For the lower limb, the active electrode is placed over the belly of the calf muscle and inactive electrode is placed over the sole of the foot.
then for placement of the electrode of upper lip, one is placed over the flexor aspect of the forearm at the medial, at the junction between the proximal one third and two third of the lower two third of the muscle. Why? What are the reasons? Yes, the muscle is at the maximum bulk at this junction. And the passive electrode over the palm or over the cubital muscles. So you can keep it on the palm or you can keep it on the cubital muscles. And you do the right. Now what current you are supposed to do? Here paradigm current, paradigm surge current is given. The surge duration is 3 seconds. Means it is longer. There in the paradigm football we gave 1 second. Here it is longer. It is in the medium. Here we don't have the, uh, in our uh, machine which we are using, we don't have, we are not mixing it according to the time. The medium surge. So you have to correlate where you have to, you see the time line and say whether the surging is 3 second or 1 second. You know, the light switch on, that means the current is passing, it is surging. Switch on, so you correlate, 3 seconds. So, and the surging level should be? 9 seconds. 9 seconds. It is 1 is to 3 only ratio. But you are surging it for 3 seconds and giving the rest for 9 seconds. So that there is adequate time for the muscles to relax and again for the full contraction. If the muscles are not relaxing completely, they will not contract completely with full power. So you are going the intensity again till you see the visible contraction of the muscles or the muscle pressing of the toes in the lower limb. And then you have the fingers. Then treatment time 15 to 30 minutes. Elect rectangular electrodes are used and we are always to tell the patient to do the active movement. When the chore movement is occurring, they have to do the active movements. So there are other techniques also. This is one technique so that you don't become confused. Yes, sir, we have been going one keeping here, one keeping here. So that is we used to change the positions also previously. Now we are just concentrating on the distal movement. Distal movement is enough because there are uh, the studies showing it. Only the distal movement is enough to pump the maximum of the blood back to It's more like pumping. So we give for, when you are not giving this, we tell the patient to use the squeeze balls, smiley balls and ask them to squeeze it, keeping the hand up. If there is no elevation, there is no training. You can do this also, but that will cause movements, but it will not help in yes, with blood pressure. So we have to keep it in that and they have to do. Important thing is these all electrotherapic modalities are always used as adjunct treatments or supporting treatments. Our whole physiotherapy is a combined effort of exercise and electro. Never rely on electrotherapy solely. It is always the so without voluntary contraction you are giving paradigm current will not be that effective. What happens? Paradigm current is giving you minimal current and along with that when you do the active movements, it is the force is becoming more. So electrotherapy is solely never the
that should be f for this class today afternoon i will be taking the motor points of phase because we already discussed and we will start with that thank you